I'm just going to point out in this video to ease some confusion that I have uh, previously fixed this defective solenoid that arrived when the bike was pretty much uh, brand new, just out of warranty. And uh, I have accidentally ripped it out during this video, and I'm going to fix it. Not as a part of this video, it's just as a, uh, a separate repair. So I'm going to pull the solenoid out from this, uh, from this carburetor. It's just going to sort of disappear from here. So that's why it's going to happen. I'm just going to explain that now. Again, like last time, I'm going to drain this carb, get all the gas out of it. This carburetor, all of the screws are easily accessible. We must take note of this bracket on the left-hand side for the idle control screw. And there is also another bracket on the bottom right that is also in support of holding that as well. So one, two, three of the screws have a secondary purpose here. Not a big deal, just pointing it out. And we can see that idle screw can flop right out of that bracket. Uh, it springs forward and that's all there is to it. With all the screws slackened, we can start removing them individually. I'll note that the two on the left side that hold the uh, idle screw are under a little bit of tension because the throttle pushes it, the throttle plates push against it, as we could see uh, right down here. Just a little bit of tension, nothing crazy. We can see that whole bracket comes off with the two screws. We can just pull that right out. The third bracket for the other end also comes off with no issues at all. Finally, the fourth screw holds nothing in, and now we're left with uh, nothing holding in this uh, float cover. We just gently rock it, pull down, and we see that it comes right out, no problems at all. Now we'll do our inspection. Again, we see that the seal is good. We don't see any debris on the bottom, like I said. And when we look at the carb, we don't see any horror stories either. We're gonna see the problem lies in the jets and the emulsion tube. So let's take a look. We're gonna detach again with the number eight. Loosen that up. Watch out for our floats. I don't need to be breaking that. Remember to store all parts and pieces on the back of your DeLorean so you don't lose them. This is our first contestant, and I'm not gonna tell you that it's plugged. There we go. But this one, this one sits a bit higher. This, this one doesn't have the propensity to, to have this issue. But we're gonna clean it out anyway and then reevaluate it. So I cleaned this one out. This one looks okay. I'm gonna say there's no problems here. I haven't seen any change in diameter. We'll take a look at the next one. This one's no good. I mean, you could see through it. The actual hole is about, I don't know, 20% of what it should be. And though you probably can't see it in the camera, there's like a halo around the hole. And that is like ethanol. It, it turns into a, a plastic. And that halo is what the actual size of the hole should be. Very interesting. So keep this in mind. Maybe I'll take a, a, a photo if I can. Right? The, the halo is not where the gas is passing through. It's actually blocked. The little dot is where the gas is actually passing through. But it should be uh, a magnitude bigger. So we're going to clean it out and we're going to look at this again. This is what I mean by a magnitude bigger. Take a look at that. That is an incredible difference right there. Problem solved. We're going to put these back in and button up that carb now. Everything was reassembled just like last time. I'm going to be putting the cover back on now. Cover is back on. I start by hand tightening the one screw that doesn't have any bracket on it. It's the top right one. And now I'm going to move to the one that has the bracket that holds the end. For this particular bracket, as I tighten in these two screws just to make them snug, what I do is I push off this throttle plate right here see right over here to relieve tension and that allows us to fully seat without being obstructed so just lift off the throttle plate you tighten these down with a screwdriver and then you can let go and you'll be right back in the original position finally this screw here for the idle snaps back in that position and this is done ready to go all I got to do is get the solenoid back in here for a separate project and I'm good make sure one last time that the bowl drain screw is completely closed Incidentally, this repair has been completed. I have a new epoxy cap now drying over that repair. That's going to go in the motorcycle as part of this action after all. I've repaired and reinstalled the solenoid. I've pushed the wire back through that wire harness here on the back carburetor. The cables are now coming through the top again where they'll be reconnected. Cables are now reconnected up top. This completes the carburetor work. 
Now I'll go and undo this wire wrap I put here to hold the fuel filter up. So this can be moved back into position. And this sits right here on this holder, just like that. At this point, there are two schools of thought. I could either go through the trouble of putting back the entire gas tank, or I could do what I generally do, which is use a small gas tank, connect it right up to the fuel filter, add a little gas, and try everything out. I'm gonna show that method first. It's gonna start with the temporary removal of this hose right here off the fuel filter. This allows me to add my hose on to my tank and add just a little bit of gasoline, just enough to test the motorcycle without having to install the whole gas tank onto it. I've got the tank filled up now with gas. We're going to turn on the bike and let it warm up. We're going to pull out the choke first, which is a little more difficult without the bracket installed, but there we go. We give it a second, let the fuel pump purge any air. Now it has stopped. Got the choke all the way on. Give it a second. Let it find itself. the choke a notch and, and I'll say it, it's hard to tell what the notches are right now with it disconnected but I, I brought in a little response is, is looking real good real good and the bike is still cold showing promise at this point I have the choke is completely off the bike can now run without the choke operating which is good and what I'm concerned most of all about is the just off idle operation as before so I'm going to just very carefully roll off idle right there that's what I'm looking at idle very lightly like that just like that when you can do that the problem's been solved I'm going, I'm going so slow on this, watch my hand. When you become just off idle, then you fix it. Obviously revs are important too. From idle to 2000. These are the original pipes of the mission, so they make that farting sound. At this point, I feel confident we're going we're gonna to buckle it up, we'll let it cool down a bit. We're going to put the tank back on, and then we're actually going to put some fresh gas in here. I used uh, some of the older gas to do this test. Some fresh gas would probably be most helpful. Having completed the test, I'll put that original hose back on. We'll start putting the tank back on this unit. Down the tank in rough approximation, but I'm gonna have to lift up here because I gotta get the speedometer and power cables back through this hole. I'm gonna do that now. And I, I've got enough through to work with. I gotta get those round rubber uh, discs back in those tracks that I mentioned earlier. And once they're in, I'm kind of walking the tank forward like this from the back to get it into position. And you'll know when it's in position because the rear screw holes will line up with the uh, threads on the chassis. At this point, we will be plugging in our hose from the tank into the petcock. And then our retainer clip would go around. If you were doing your initial testing right now, you wouldn't have to uh, be screwing in any more screws here or anything like that. You would just need to secure this hose. You would be adding a small amount of fuel to this tank, and I mean a small amount of fuel, not like a gallon, right? 
just enough to get this motorcycle running for a couple of minutes to warm up, right? And then you would be setting this uh, switch over to reserve to make sure you're getting the stuff at the bottom of the tank. But I'm done with all that testing. So I'm gonna start securing this side here. This is the 12 millimeter back of the tank. Followed by the left hand side, which has a uh, locking bracket for the choke. Now we're gonna hook the gauge cluster back up. Two wire connections first, followed by the speedometer cable. Everything is now reconnected inside as I uh, position this. So I gotta pull down on the speedometer cable from under the bike. Having pulled down on the cables, I'm ready to put the screws back in and that'll finish up the gas tank. Again, these screws are turned in with a four millimeter hex. We follow up with the uh, front seat and the bracket, five millimeter hex, will install right over here. And finally, we conclude with the rear seat. It falls into this notch and then goes through this stud right here and finishes this project the way it started with the 14 millimeter. Again, after cool down, which my bike has cooled, or my wife's bike, the carb should be reinspected for leaks. Very important. These are dry. There are no leaks. Everything is safe. Uh, take it out, ride it, make sure it's operating properly. I hope you found this video of the quick carb repair for the V-Star 650 valuable and time-saving. Thanks for watching. Oh, listen to that bike. Grab it. Grab it. Oh yeah. You happy? What? Yes. There you go. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs>